When Tracy Evans made a comment after episode 35, it reminded me of when I was a lecturer in Nigeria. I would spend most of the summer vacation in the Canary Islands. One of the smaller islands was La Palma, the greenest, lushest destination on the Canary Island ferry. I had my first ever meal of goat there. It wasn't the first time I'd been offered goat, but it was the first time there was nothing else on the menu. There were very few tourists in those far-off days, and life looked as if not much had changed since the beginning of time. The people were relaxed, friendly, and appeared unconcerned about anything. I was in a little shop which sold everything from fishing tackle and sewing needles to bread and buns. It was swarming with flies and nobody was disturbed one little bit. One could almost think that Charles Lyle's claim that things go on just the same since the beginning of time could be true. But this timeless dream has been shattered. Volcanic eruptions have brought rapid and stunning changes which have caught the world's attention. But these upheavals are small in comparison to an eruption in 1963, when a new island emerged from the Atlantic not far from Iceland. It continued to rise, and the Atlantic continued to erode it for several years. And now the experts tell us it has reached a balance which should last for centuries. The leader of the Icelandic Geological Survey team was Sigurdur Thorarinsson. His team began exploration of the island soon after it emerged. In 1964, he wrote, An Icelander who has studied geology and geomorphology at foreign universities is later taught by experience in his own homeland that the timescale he has been trained to attach to geological developments is misleading when assessments are made of forces constructive and destructive, which have moulded and are still moulding the face of Iceland. Well, we all know what we are taught in the world's secular education institutions. We are taught Lyle's uniformity principle and his millions of years. We taught plate tectonics, mountains being pushed up over vast ages of time. We are taught that the rocks are carved out over enormous geological ages to produce landforms eventually populated by varied ecosystems thousands of years later. But let's see what Sigurdur Thoranenson actually observed on Surtsey. Only a few months sufficed for a landscape to be created which was so varied and mature that he was almost beyond belief. During the summer of 1964 and the following winter, we not only had a lava dome with a glowing lava lake in a summit crater and red-hot lava flows rushing down the slopes, increasing the height of the dome, and transforming the configuration of the island from one day to another, here we could also see wide sandy beaches and precipitous crags lashed by the breakers of the sea. There were gravel banks and lagoons, impressive cliffs, there were hollow glens and soft undulating land, there were fractures and fault scarps, channels and screes. You might come to a beach covered with flowing lava on its way to the sea. Three weeks later, you might come back to the same place and be literally confounded by what met your eye. Now, there were precipitous lava cliffs of considerable height, and below them, you would see boulders worn by the surf, some of which were almost round. On an abrasion platform, cut into the cliff and further out, there was a sandy beach where you could walk at low tide without getting wet. These features are supposed to take a very long time to develop. While volcanic activity was still going on, the first inhabitants, an assortment of insects, lice and creepy crawlies, arrived on a tuft carried by the waves. Birds started nesting shortly afterwards 
and their droppings provided fertiliser for seeds blown in by the wind, as well as others sticking to their legs. Now, less than 60 years after it first poked its nose out of the Atlantic, the island has a mature and varied landscape, with a variety of plants and animals thriving there. Sigurdur Thorarinson noted that what elsewhere may take thousands of years, may take a few weeks or even days here. Of course, his meaning is, what is assumed to take thousands of years, we observe to take a few weeks or days. Those assumptions are far from correct. But how would we actually know anything about the timescale without the written record of an eyewitness like Thorarinson. As Professor Willard Libby wrote when he introduced the radiocarbon dating system, history goes back only 5,000 years. In fact, the earliest date which has been established with any degree of certainty is about the time of the first dynasty of Egypt. And that is not even 4,000 years ago. Because of the ancient records of the tilt of the Earth's axis, we can be confident that the fountains of the Great Deep were broken up at the start of the Great Flood about four and a half thousand years ago. And we can see from the chronology of the Bible that creation happened less than 2,000 years before that. But there may be those who say, how do we know that the Bible is right? about how and when things began. There was nobody to see what happened, so how could anybody know and write it down? Well, the creation account was written by Moses. God spoke to Moses face to face. We read in Numbers 6, verse 12 to 8, If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision, and I speak to him in a dream. Not so with Moses. He is faithful in all my house. I speak to him face to face, even plainly, and not in dark sayings. God spoke a great deal to Moses. We read in Exodus 24:18 that he was 40 days and 40 nights with God on the top of Mount Sinai. And in Exodus 34, verse 28, he spent another 40 days and 40 nights alone with God and Mount Sinai. After the tabernacle was completed, Exodus 33, 11 tells us the Lord frequently spoke with Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend in the tabernacle. Moses wrote down what God said to him. In Exodus 24, we read, and Moses wrote all the words of the Lord. Since God was there at the creation and Moses wrote down what God told him, we can be confident that Moses' account is true and accurate. Jesus said in John 5 verse 46, If you believed Moses, you would believe me. So anyone who does not believe Moses does not believe Jesus either. And if the Bible is accurate about the creation, then what can we say about the stories the astronomers tell us? Let's look at that next time. Thank you for joining me for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe and press the bell so that you'll be notified as I release new movies. If you'd like to support this project, you're welcome to do so through Patreon. Find a link on my channel banner and in the description below.